What's up guys, it's River, and today we're gonna find the best budget camera. The cameras on this list are going to be as affordable as possible without these cameras being hot garbage. There are plenty of cheap cameras out there, but not all of them are actually worth your money. So sit back and relax and make sure to watch this video all the way through because you don't wanna miss your perfect camera and this video is jam packed with useful information. Let's get into it. By the way, if you're new to this channel, my name is River. I'm a professional director and cinematographer, and I review cameras on this channel and help you guys find the perfect camera for you without spending a ton of money. Plus, I'm always teaching you guys how to get the most out of your camera. So if you like this video, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe for all of my future videos and all the products that we talk about today, I'll be linking down below. So make sure to check that out. Let's get into the video. So the first camera on the list is the Nikon B500, which is also the most affordable camera on this list. If you play your cards right and use the link down below to get this camera, this camera is actually under $300 and it delivers a pretty amazing value for that $300. The most impressive thing about this camera is the zoom lens that's built right in. You can literally zoom into something almost a mile away from you. With this camera, you literally have anything and everything you need in that one lens. You can easily do concert photography, landscapes, vacation photos, literally anything you wanna throw at this camera, it can handle. The only thing that I don't recommend using this camera for is to spy on your neighbor. I've seen the comments, guys. Do not spy on your neighbors, though the zoom range is pretty amazing. This camera shoots at about seven frames per second, which is a pretty decent shooting speed and is pretty much what you would get for a beginner starter camera. And video wise, this camera does full HD up to 30 frames per second. It does 720p at 60 frames per second, so you get two times slow motion. And in potato quality, which is 480p, you get 120 frames per second. It looks really bad, I would not use it. There is no 4K in this camera, but again, considering the price point, that would be hard to come by. And when it comes to autofocus, in photo mode, it's pretty spot on and it's pretty reliable. However, in video mode, it's a little bit hit and miss but it does a good enough job for a casual shooter. However, there is one thing that you have to know about this camera is that it has a 16 millimeter one inch sensor, which is about the same size of a sensor that you would normally get in a point and shoot. This camera ultimately is going to give you the quality of a point and shoot. I like to think of it as a point and shoot camera with an amazing lens. And if you're somebody that wants the look of a proper DSLR, I would not buy this camera. This camera is really meant for casual shooters, specifically because this camera does not have a manual mode. All of the modes on this camera are automatic modes, so you really don't have a lot of control over your image. Again, this is really meant for someone that's a casual shooter and just wants a dope casual camera. And one thing that I love about this camera is that it has this really unique lo-fi, almost like a camcorder look, and it has a bunch of really interesting filters built right in, so if you're somebody that doesn't wanna do a lot of editing, just wants to capture their life in a really unique and beautiful way, this camera is definitely for you. However, there is something that I have to mention when it comes to the build quality and design of this camera. The body is pretty robust, it's definitely made out of plastic, but it's not something that's cheap and flimsy and will not break down on you. However, the buttons are kinda of mushy and it doesn't really feel like a premium device, so if you're not a camera snob, you should be totally fine, but if you're somebody that really wants a premium device, the camera after this is definitely the one for you. And a quick side note, this camera actually does not have rechargeable batteries. It actually takes AA batteries that you get from the local convenience store, and yeah, that's kind of a good thing, kind of a bad thing. Nikon does say that it'll give you 600 shots on a single set of batteries, which is pretty decent and more than what DSLRs can do for you, but just the pain of having to buy new batteries is kind of annoying. However, chances are if you're watching this video, you're probably very budget conscious. I would recommend just simply buying a set of rechargeable AA batteries. However, if you're somebody that wants a proper DSLR, you wanna be able to take gorgeous photos and you're definitely more than a casual shooter, the next camera is the one for you. So let's talk about the Canon T7, the world's best-selling DSLR. And one of the reasons this camera is the world's best-selling DSLR is that it gives you amazing photo quality, but also at a very affordable price. For starters, this camera actually has a 24 megapixel APS-C size sensor, which is the same size as 35 millimeter film. Now this sensor is really gorgeous, looks amazing, and is the same sensor that you find in $1,200 or $1,300 Canon cameras. To get that sensor and image quality in a camera that's less than $500 is pretty impressive. 
On top of that, this camera has gorgeous Canon colors and Canon RAW. And because of those two features, your photos are gonna look amazing right out of the box. Plus, when it comes down to editing your photos, you're gonna have so much flexibility and you're really gonna be able to push and pull those colors. Canon cameras are probably the easiest cameras to just pick up and start shooting with, but when it comes to actually making good work, they are the most user-friendly cameras out there. In terms of raw horsepower, sadly, this camera's a bit slow. It only does three frames per second when it comes to photos. However, for most people, you should be just fine. Unless you're shooting something with a lot of action, like dance or sports, you probably won't really notice it. However, when it comes to shooting photos, this camera will give you everything that you want from a proper DSLR, like long exposure, high-speed autofocus, and manual mode. On top of that, the physical body itself is really robust, very durable, and it's just super satisfying to take photos with. It feels way better than an Nikon camera or a casual point and shoot. The one downside when it comes to this camera is that when it comes to video, it simply does not cut it. The video in this camera is by no means bad. However, it only does 1080p up to 30 frames per second and there are no slow motion options. And when it comes to autofocus in video mode, it's pretty bad, I just would not use it. The Canon T7 is mainly a photo camera and I probably wouldn't pick it up if I plan to do a lot of video with it. However, I do have a camera on this list that would be perfect for you guys if you wanna do a ton of video. And on top of that, this camera also uses the standard Canon LP6 battery, which is an absolute beast. This battery can easily last you all day, if not several days of shooting. And when it comes to videos, you can easily get five to six hours of video shooting. There's only two things about this camera that I don't particularly love. The first thing that bothers me about this camera is that it's a fixed screen in the back. So if you're trying to do low angle or high angle shots, it's kind of hard to work with this camera. And the second thing is that there is no mic jack for external audio, but again, it's not a video camera, but something to be aware of. However, if you're sitting there going, River, I really want a budget camera, but I also want this budget camera to be an absolute beast. I want it to do photos really well. I want it to do video really well. I wanna feel like I have an amazing camera in my hands. In that case, my friend, I got you. By the way, if you guys are interested in turning your $500 beginner camera into a $5,000 pro camera, be sure to check out the Camera Boost course in the link down below. I'm gonna show you step by step how to get amazing photos and videos out of your budget camera because you don't really need fancy equipment to get amazing results. On top of that, I'm going to show you all of my secrets for shooting, lighting, and even editing all within this one course. So make sure to check out the link down below for the Camera Boost course. And with that, let's get back into the video and look at my favorite budget camera. If you're somebody that wants a ton of horsepower while staying on a budget, the Canon M50 is perfect for you. Now, this is the most expensive camera on the list. However, it is worth every single penny. The Canon M50 actually has the same specs as a high-end Canon camera. It has the same 24 megapixel sensor that the Canon T7 had, which just goes to show you that Canon always puts quality sensors in their camera. On top of that, the Canon M50 also has Canon colors and Canon RAW. In terms of photos, it does a blazing 10 frames per second, which is perfect for anybody that wants to shoot a lot of action. And the video in this camera is also pretty amazing. It does full HD all the way up to 60 frames per second, so you do get two times slow motion. And it also has 120 frames per second, but sadly in 720p. And even though it's 720p, it honestly doesn't look half bad. And that continues over to video, but it gets even better. In video mode, it actually has intelligent face and object tracking, plus the video autofocus is super, super reliable. You literally can just set it and forget it. If you're someone that's even slightly worried about their video autofocus, this camera is not going to let you down. And this camera does have 4K. However, when you go into 4K mode, it massively crops into your sensor, which makes everything super zoomed in, and it gets rid of that amazing autofocus. I really would not buy this camera for the 4K. It's just not worth it. And this camera also has a side articulating screen with touch controls. And the best part about that touch screen is the fact that this camera also has touch to autofocus. You can simply tap an object or a face on your screen and the camera will intelligently focus on it but also track that object as it moves within your frame. And there's also a Mark II version of this camera that has slightly faster autofocus and the ability to use that camera as a webcam. Most of you guys probably won't notice the faster autofocus, but if you're somebody that wants to use their DSLR as a webcam, this might be the camera for you. 
In terms of the physical body, it's nice and light. It's super compact. It has an amazing side articulating screen so you can actually see yourself. This camera would be great for vlogging or even starting your own YouTube channel. And this camera also has an input for external audio, which is key if you plan on recording yourself talking. The only thing that I don't like about this camera in terms of design is the fact that the battery really doesn't last that long and you're definitely gonna need a couple of spares to get through a full day of shooting. But my favorite thing about this camera is that this is a camera that you can really grow with. The Canon M50 is probably the best all-round camera while also staying on a budget. It's really gonna give you the value of a $1,000 or $1,200 camera, but at a much, much lower price. Well, guys, that's pretty much it for my top three budget cameras. Before I go, if you wanna learn how to make your beginner camera perform like a pro camera, make sure to check out the Camera Boost course in the link down below. And if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. It really helps the video out and lets me know that I should keep making more of this content for you guys. Make sure to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.